a term that I use. It's called spooky dancing at a distance. So, you know, spooky yes. at a distance. But it's like dancing. I say dancing at a distance because same thing like you were saying. And I have this experience with the Team Human podcast where I will be like talking to my friends about something or searching for something to like, I don't know, like a nugget to like get me to the next like make a consensus or something like that within sure. my own mind. And then like, sure enough, I'll like, Oh God, Doug, uh, sure. Okay. You're going to have Mark Pesci. on talk about the demonology of, uh, you know, <laughs> the algorithm. Oh, oh yeah. That's just too on the nose. Like, are you like <laughs> bugging my, my, my fucking computer? <laughs> like right. how does that happen? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, totally. I love it. Yeah, I love that you go to that same, like, uh, mildly paranoid place <laughs> that I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot you know, of fun. Uh, totally. Like, I, I always think, like, a little bit too much, like, about, like, the algorithm. Like, oh, my God, like, how much is it reflecting <laughs> too much, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you think about that? Cause I, you know, one of the themes that I've drawn out of your, uh, you know, like your, your online presence mm -hmm. is, uh, an interest in technology. Uh, you know, I, I yeah. actually, uh, I have a couple questions about this. I want to like, I want to talk about minds as a platform. I want to talk about web three, you know, in particular, what do you think about the algorithm as a form of um, like manifestation almost, or like, you know, all of these algorithms that we have sort of built our lives around on social media seem to be a way to like concretize Jung's concept of synchronicity where like, the, the universe will bring you, you know, 20 fish after you, you talk about fish on a podcast. But now it's like it literally happens, you know, because the, the phone is always listening to me or whatever. If I'm talking about therapy with a friend for like five minutes and the next time I, I do a Google search, everything that shows up is from psychology today, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what do you think about that? Is is that magic or or I don't know. Um, I do think that the the way that I like to think about it, and which reflects a lot in my my work, is kind of the cyberdelic point of view, and yeah. that like um, all media, this like the internet is is built upon uh, technology and media, like from when we stole uh, stole fire from the gods when we first started to play mm. with fire. Like, this is like the beginning of tools, beginning of technology, beginning of the word, beginning of externalizing our inner world and then like crystallizing it and then creating these bigger iterations of this process until where we are now, where, I, where I'm thinking about it is this um, I was at this talk with uh, Are You Serious, and he was saying that like, what what is what how he's framing it is this social singularity, and I mm. think he, what what he's what he's talking about is like this like great melding and meshing of like culture, and of like you know everybody is. You know, searching and, and finding and, and putting more things onto this thing to where it, it's flat and where you could like kind of like grab anything and everywhere. Like that's to go to one of your, your things that you kind of brought up is what intrigues me about minds. Prior to this, you know, um, something Doug recently wrote about thinking about AI as the conquistadors and social media yeah. was the, the, the missionaries. And right. uh, instantly, because because I grew up with, my, uh, I was born in 84. So like, you know, social mm. media, I knew a time, AOL I got in um, junior high. But then I went to technical school and I did programming. So we had a, like access to like a T1 connection while everybody was dial up. And fuck, we used to fuck around so much on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then so like, so like then when you got social media, and my, my joke with my friend was, uh, uh, my friend Gabby, he was like, because we had like this forum and we did like this, like, we did basically the same thing in, in our high school with our friends in, in our class. 
And and he would always like we would get drunk. He would always say that like, oh fucking Mark Zuckerberg stole my idea. I'm like, yeah, yeah. whatever. The Gabby page, and and we would just laugh about it. So like, when a lot of stuff of like bands and like, because you know early MySpace was like promoting the bands and shit like that. Yeah, I used it that way, and I would go there, but I never thought about like branding myself as anything or doing anything online like online you know and so like sure. later i you know i kind of like go to raves and i party with my friends and like fuck the internet fuck twitter fuck fuck all that shit and then like <laughs> later you know I, I i go and and at this this was before the fucking uh, great me more you know <laughs> and mm. mines comes out just before that and it's like this alternative website and at that time, it, like the brand was like uh, anonymous, and I'm like open source. I like open source. I know what that's all about. And I go on there, and I, and it was like I wasn't promoting myself as as like my because like on Facebook I had my my real name Daniel and where I'm from and all this kind of stuff. So there was like a clean slate. And I'm like okay, and I was like, what can I use that like is meaningful to me? And it was the little bee shaman in fucking um, Food of the Gods, Terrence McKenna's wife. Um, does this like drawing of like this cape cape painting and it's the famous you know bee shaman with the mushrooms growing out of it so i put that up and then i change my my handle satori comes from um well it's a it's a buddhist uh, zen concept but i got it from jack kerouac and there's this book uh, called satori in paris and it's just about him riding in this cab and just like you know getting these like sudden like uh, to behold, like, the world in the palm of your hand, you know, like, you know, like, kind of, like, Blakey in a uh, uh, way of looking at life. And so, I like, I was like, oh, Satori, I'd never, I didn't know what it meant. I just liked how it sounded in my head. And so, like, when I was struggling to find something, like, meaningful, so I put Satori and then D. And then from there, I'm like, I, I, I it was a conscious thing because, like, you know, it was early and everybody was talking about, like, doing this or doing that. And then, then it started becoming like everybody shitting on each other. I'm like, oh my god, this is turning into like the mainstream social media. And so I'm like, at least for me, yeah. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna like just make a conscious effort to be different. <laughs> Whatever is yeah. going on. And so I just started like to dig into like what what did I like? Like what were things that that I always thought are like what I would want to read about or like want to like. Mm. So you know, so stuff like that became like Robert Anton Wilson. Uh, yeah. Terrence McKenna, um, yeah. that kind of stuff, and then that's like a you know a big pool. I have like this, this funny story about like, so I'm a cook and and I was yeah. working at it was called Hanoki and the Bird, and at that at this time that I was working, this was a couple years ago, like four years ago, but at that time I was working there it was the third best restaurant in LA. I cooked for LeBron James like after one of the like I think it's called the ESPYS or whatever. He had his private dinner at our restaurant and actually cooked his meal. <laughs> like he ordered from <laughs> my side of the, of the thing. But so like it was funny because I go into the restaurant at that day and the, the the food runner is like on it. And this guy's lazy. And I'm like, what is up with this fool? Why is he like, can I can I help you with anything? And I'm like, why is he on it? Like usually I got to yell at him. To like, hey, get over here. The food's dying. <laughs> like <laughs> fucking around. Uh, and then so, so, and he's like, LeBron James is coming. LeBron James is coming. But his energy was like a fucking kid. And I was like, it's cool that I'm cooking for LeBron James. But all I was thinking is like, do I have to like make a whole new menu? Like, is he going to order off the regular menu? Like, right. how's this fucking up with my prep? <laughs> like, yeah. Everything was going to my head. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I have all this stuff to prep for. Like, is this going to fuck up my, my day? Because it's my job, you know? Like, it's yeah. like a, a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. <laughs> anyway, so it, he ordered off to our regular menu or whatever, so I didn't have to like prep anything different. And anyways, so I, uh, so I, I, when I retell the story to my dad later, you know, uh, he's like, he was cool. And then I, in my own head, I was thinking, who would I be excited for? And, yeah, right. uh, like I, I, I wasn't excited for LeBron James. I thought it was cool, but I wasn't like the food runner. I yeah, wasn't like a kid on mind. Christmas. Yeah, I wasn't like a kid on Christmas. And so when I was really thinking about that, like everybody that I thought about was dead. <laughs> no, no. It was like, oh, Robert Alton Wilson. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> and then like everybody, I was like, oh my God, I got to have like a live heroes. <laughs> and, yeah. And then, 
And then the, the next two people that I, I, I went to were Douglas Rushkoff and mm. then um, Saul, Saul Williams. Saul Williams, anyway. the uh, slam poet, right? The poet? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. The Saul Williams, that's a good... Uh, a good entry point. Do you do you uh, vibe with like Neil Stevenson at all? Um, no, you, not I, I'm not uh, familiar. You haven't heard of him? Oh, you're you're writing. Uh, oh. It's it's like sort of in the same. Uh, I okay. I was reading uh, like some of your blog posts at Minds.com, and oh, okay. Uh, so I think this is a series, right? Uh, the Paper Junkie Letters. Oh yeah, yeah. That was like an early thing that we we did. Yeah, That's it was. Cool. I I know. I I like. I went deep into the archives. It was a while ago, but I really loved this. Yeah. Uh, in particular, this part. This uh, really resonated with me. I'm just gonna read it uh, directly yeah. from your Minds blog. Um, but it it goes. I tried really hard, really hard to stop, but I always wrote about my dreams and poetry. The truth is like poetry. No one fucking understands it. If they say they do, they're a fucking liar or a trickster. Either way, <laughs> run away. With dreams, with drugs, with night terrors, alcohol, with foot and mouth, brain come undone. I type endlessly. Push yourself. Push yourself. Fucking push yourself. Which is like... I don't know if that's fucking uh I don't know when exactly you wrote this. I know it, it was it was a while ago. It, it was actually pre-pandemic. So you were yeah. like I think on a wavelength that I've only jumped on to post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. Uh because like this is uh I guess you could say that since college I've tried really hard to stop writing about dreams oh, and poetry. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a creative writing uh, degree, and so I've always like I've always been you know on the fence, a little bit paranoid about anyone ever seeing my writing, <laughs> and uh, also a little bit compelled, I guess, to to never stop writing. <laughs> um, and this this little poem that was like a part of a, a longer piece that sort of feels like maybe a chapter in a in a novel almost mm -hmm. it like a i i would say like a cyberpunk novel like something the reason i brought up neil stevenson uh he wrote like for example snow crash the crash okay yeah, yeah yeah i never read it but yeah yeah which of course like zuckerberg named the metaverse after yeah, uh, yeah. the the novel snow crash so I I kind of feel like he fits into the like the hacker cyberdelic culture that yeah. that, you, that yeah. you're into, totally. and the, your style of writing is something I I hope you don't take offense to this, uh, because I feel I put myself in the same category, but um, a lot of your blog posts feel like it's uh, almost reclaiming like tryhard culture, which <laughs> like I, I don't know, hopefully you're okay with that, but like. In Reddit around, I want to say, like, 2013 or something, it suddenly became really uncool to write stuff that was badass. And I was always really mm. disappointed mm -hmm. about that. But your writing is so badass. Um, I don't know well, if this I, is going to... Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just a fucking punk. You know, like, I, I grew up in, like, the East L.A. punk scene. And we're just, we're just like that. And if I'm going to write, like, anything real then I'm going to use my real voice and my real voice is fucking like that. And so, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. It comes across great. And I'm glad you also, uh, I'm glad you touched on the meaning of Satori. What, what is, what is the, like the Buddhist definition or, or the it's sudden definition? enlightenment, sudden enlightenment. Oh, sudden. So like, uh, okay. like a lightning bolt of, of a con like, you know, awakening. Yeah, right. Like what happened to um, what's his name, uh, Eckhart Tolle, uh, on the park yeah. bench, like just yes. sudden. And then, uh, and then you were saying that the the Minds blog is where you uh, started to uh, write sort of the the kinds of things that you were interested in reading, which is you know yeah. I think a, a good strategy if there is a good strategy yeah. for. You know, being you know, a creative. 
go, yeah, go ahead. To, to, to your point, you know, um, and even to uh, probably why um, I, I felt compelled to to have that in, in that book, because like the, the, the larger concept of it is it's the paper bums is about the actually the time that we in right, are right now. Uh, but when I got on yep. minds, like I was, I was came up with this concept of like the near future, and it's like the algorithm has totally taken over. Yeah. And I, I in in that near future, what what I'm holding on to is like physically writing, like writing on paper. Yeah. That's why, uh, like, I'm a paper bum. Like, right, I, right, right. like, even even still to this time, like, I take notes on paper, like. That's how I process stuff. Like that's yeah. If I read something, then I have to like make a note of it and like I walk around. <laughs> and, like you know what I mean? Like that's just like a uh, part of my like I say like um you know I learned uh what for my own self what reading was about by reading um Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. But I nice. learned uh, of what what writing really is about is with Jack Kerouac, and mm. you know writing as this way to process reality, and so like. I've always done it, and I've I've always um, even the one that I shared with you, the unconscious tape bl- blues comes from this um, twenty three page um, like stream of consciousness poem that I wrote like after I got arrested, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on? Mm. <laughs> I, did, I didn't get that shit out of my head." Like, cause yeah, I'm yeah, doing, yeah. I'm doing stuff that I like, you know. I, I I'm saying, it, you know, I want to do this, but then like my unconscious tape loops and like me. I could just see myself like, you know, you know, going this way. And so I like I and I've always read about this process, uh, you know, of, of my early heroes there, the beats. And then I'm like, fuck it. I got to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, this, you know, and then that became like I was like, oh, that was like my therapy. And so like any time yeah. I, I would go, always go back to that process. And so like, you know, uh, um, so that's that's like my own uh Saul Williams also has this other book called The Dead uh, MC Scrolls, and it was pretty formative in my in my early like development of you know um, expression and and what I'm talking about too with like Saul Williams, uh, I mean with Jack Kerouac and writing, and so you know I I shared and even it's kind of funny how Facebook they they didn't have like blogs they had like notes and you I would write notes. <laughs> Yeah. And then like no one no one would like comment on them. I was like, oh my god, is it like like is does everybody think I'm weird? <laughs> like, why, why why isn't everybody like like you know at least liking this? Like is it is it horrible? Like I, yeah. I, I like I like tell me to stop. <laughs> like if it's that bad, like just tell me to stop. And then and then that's so, like you know, I was like you know, not incentivized of like digging deeper into it, you know, but I couldn't help myself. <laughs> like I, I yeah. stop. And then so like, and I, I was like, I think that's, that's good. And then, you know, a few times at parties, like in, in person, uh, when we would get like stoned or drunk and they'd be like, oh my God, like that, that poem you read is, is trippy, blah, blah, blah. And this, and it reminds me of this time I took acid. I'm like, yeah, mm. I know because that's why I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the point. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so like, uh, later when, when I get on mines, that's when I, and this is, you know, before the pandemic and everything. So I, uh, you know, I would go to work and then like all my, all my free time would be fostering that stuff that I, I always w- wished, you know, like I remember in, in college, you know, I read uh, paper bums refers to a Jack Kerouac book called Dharma bums. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah. And then I fashioned myself, like even in college being a Dharma bum, like I would, I would like ditch class so I could read in the library, you know. <laughs> like, Fuck yeah. you guys, you guys. Are, yeah, like, yeah, there's out, there's, there's more, more out there. <laughs> I need yeah. to get it. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's that's the, like the premise of the paper bums is this this like book that's only written on paper and that gets passed around in the underground, you know, that is not on the internet. Yeah. Because anything anything on the internet gets flattened by the algorithm. Yeah, you know, it gets recycled into the thing. So like, and then it's so far deep into the algorithm taking control that there's no every, everybody is not producing their own weird. You know, uh, they're, yeah, they're just they're just uh, consuming the recycled right uh, stuff. And so he he does this ritual. Like, um, I have another one, another blog where it opens up with him burning his uh, daily uh, poetry that he writes. 
and that mm. like this this girl gets a piece of the book and she reads it and she she stays up all night like thinking about it yeah <laughs> And thinking, yeah. I need to find who wrote this. <laughs> That's just so, it's so fucking perfect. The, yeah. it's, it like really is a radical act to do anything off of, like, I mean, uh, sometimes feel self-conscious or guilty or paranoid or shameful or whatever mm-hmm. for using Google Docs for everything, you know? Oh, uh-huh. I, I know very well they're they're reading all of it or or not mm-hmm. like a actual human assigned to me <laughs> like a yeah yeah you know like a caseworker or something but like the algorithm is certainly learning my my deepest darkest thoughts you know because i i've written all my poetry i've written all my notes i've written all my you know like business plans and whatever on mm-hmm. google uh, because it's a free service, but the reason it's a free service is because they're mining it for information for about these large uh, language models. Exactly, and it's it's really fascinating to me that you um, that you wrote this in 2019, and I t- it's kind of the moment that we're in just in the last couple months with Chat GPT yeah. and. Yeah like AI coming out and stuff. It, it really seems like a prescient uh, insight that you were able to uh, bring down. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you know, um, at that time too, you know, I, I was reading, you know, Mark Pesci's stuff about uh, last days of reality. So I, I just kind of like, you know, that's, you know, Doug and Mark Pesci are like people I mind to like, um, see the near future and like work on processing reality. And then the byproduct is poetry. And then I, I work it in into these like weird little blogs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's a bulk of my process. (laughs) Like, Oh my God, demonology of the, of the algorithm. That's exactly what it is. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, so he uses that, that metaphor to talk about like, what the algorithm's actually doing, you know, they're feeding off of our desires and the kind of what you were saying earlier. Yeah. That it'll know, know so much of us that is reflecting our, ourselves to ourselves. Mm. And in a lot of ways, um, I was, what, what I've recently been digging into is dreams. And I think this is very important. Like, just like the, the, the function of dreams is, is yeah. a lot of this is your shadow, um, you know, creating these elaborate scenes. And and if you if you don't realize what's going on, then you get like lost in the dream. And I think this is what a lot what is happening a lot with these like tiny reality tunnels. And like even at this, like I see like this like weird bifurcation of like consensus reality like splitting. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Where, where language itself doesn't mean the same to like two sides of this mind that is getting qualified by like the algorithm into this binary of this side or that side. Um, Yeah. And you see, so uh, are you doing like, are you doing like dream analysis on yourself or are you, uh, I, I've of course read, I think it was like maybe your most recent blog post or one pinned to the top uh, of your, of your blog. But, um, uh, can you explain that connection between yeah. um, divisiveness and our, our like lang- linguistic and dream minds? Yeah, um, I think what's so back in um, my early days when I was uh, a Dharma bum, I also did Totec dreaming, and I got really really into uh, Totec dreaming. And um, you know, it's, it's it's like these advanced ways to do a lucid dreaming. But later, for my own self, what I, what I found out was was about learning to read the poetry of your dreams as this like gauge of where you really are, like deep inside. And what I would tell people too before they would take psychedelics would be like gauge your dreams. <laughs> I mean, if, you're, if you're having like dreams that are really like disturbing you is like you may want to like clear that up before you get into the psychedelics or use the psychedelics <laughs> to get into that because like you know a lot of times early on 
I, for, for whatever reason, and this is also probably why I use that symbol, um, the mushroom chose me. <laughs> You know, yeah. like for uh, I, I, out of all my friends, I was the one that uh, you know I wasn't really dealing them, but I would buy them in bulk, and then you know my friends would buy it and you know, pay for itself. Uh, so like yeah. I was always getting invited to to like they'll buy it, and then they want to do the shrooms with me, and so like I started to clock like every time someone would have like a bad trip, and they they were always stuck on you know their their own hangups you know prior to whatever's going on with us. You know what I mean? Like it was always mm-hmm. that. Yep. And so, so I would always, t- cause you know, they've kind of like come to me advice because I was always like talking about whatever book I was reading, you know, Alan Watts or whatever. Yeah. And so I, I would say, you know, something very easily. And then they said, what else? I don't remember about my dreams. And they're like, just before you go to sleep, do a mantra. I'm going to remember my dreams and do that 23 times. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> yes. and then, if you allow yourself, you'll remember your dreams. And it's just like, I, for me, I, uh, the, uh, I guess I'm like, I'm trying to like simplify it. It's like, uh, like checking the weather or something. Like it's like this subconscious and there, there's way more to dreaming um, than what I'm just saying right now. But very simply, like your regular um, analysis of your own dreams, engaging your own dreams is kind of like this emotional undercurrent uh, weather because also what I'm combining it with is the classic of uh, Mayan count. And what, what essentially uh, I believe uh, what's useful about what the Mayans were doing mm. is they were, they were trying to, um, because the best um, translation I heard of like what they were doing mm-hmm. is like the, the, the conscious spirit of the day. So they're, they're talking about, you know, galactic tonal cycles. And if I'm putting on my my what I have read of uh, ayahuasca and <laughs> and shamanic stuff, and combine it with my own dream stuff, and and knowing that they knew a little bit more about that stuff than I do, yeah. <laughs> okay, you're because ta- I know you're ta- really talking about the progressions of, of the solar cycles, and and what they mean. And if you're saying this is like the tone of consciousness of that day of like it reflecting into us. So, okay. There's like an ocean of consciousness. So these yeah. are like the tides and like, this is what it goes to. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then I'm using that with my dreams because um, it gets reflected. Like what I'm saying about the, the more advanced stuff, like I was doing the, the um, Mayan count and I, I was, you know, I got into a good practice of it. And within a few days I had a dream of, um, Kukakan, which is the feather serpent, and it was so crazy because like I had this dream, and like it was like the fabric of reality was like the wind, but it was this image, like you know, like in psychedelics, it's like this image of this uh, feather serpent, and it was dancing and teaching me and like giving me information. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and I was just like, hell yeah! And and uh, for everybody out there, this. Uh, I smoke a lot of weed, but I ha- I, I'm i not on <laughs> psychedelics or anything, yeah, right. but it's just deep dreaming. It's deep dreaming. <laughs> yep. you, you get more into it and you, you get, because it's not, after you get beyond the regular dreaming of your own shadows and projections of your own self, you get into this a collective subconscious and Ooh. these morphic genetic fields. And that's where, you know, you're tapping into the architects of the Mayans or whatever you, you want to get tapped into but you got to so, like uh, uh allow yourself to kind of like surf in those waters um, which is you know a little bit more advanced but yeah i mean right yeah. you see, i think you uh were you were talking about like maybe a specific ritual that you were using to get deep into the dream what is it uh my count oh yeah okay so um what i do is the yeah it's the mayan counting of the days so like the what they would call their shamans, like their translation were daykeepers. And what the daykeepers did it was would keep the count of the galactic count of where you are. But the one that I use is like a personal one. So it's like your horoscope, um, and it's your relationship to the progression. So like you get uh you get a sign, but uh every day there's um two different signs and they basically correspond between like the sun and the moon. Okay. And then, and then like your your orientation within those two orbits. So is this is 
Um, it, it's like Mayan astrology, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it, is Mayan astrology also like based on, you know, your birth time and, and birthplace and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Well, well there, there, there are different... Um, so like I do in the classic Mayan count, which is like the first... And it's not like... Um, there's other... Uh, um, have you ever seen like the calendars, right? There's there's more. There's like a like a like a um, a societal calendar that's also within it, and there's a, yeah. like another calendar. There's all sorts of different calendars, but this is like the most basic one, and like what I referred to when I said the daykeepers. So those were roughly the shamans, and they were they would have this own personal um, reading. You know, mm. and so so they would ask. So say for instance, they they will keep because um, so there's <laughs> if we really want to get into it, <laughs> there, there's twenty sides and um, thirteen uh, other other controlling sides, which are the moon ones. Uh, okay, but but they, there's combinations of them. So what 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 would typically happen back in the day, right? Would be the daykeeper. Or the shaman would have these threads of the calendar, and each thread would be a sign of a of a of one of the solar gods deities. Um, but what what it really I, I believe what they were were was like what is the reflection of the the like conscious tide of the day, like what we were talking about. And right. so they would use r- use the mythical symbols and and give them a reading. And but the the people too that will have the readings, so they will say what their birthday is. So their birthday with with uh, what today is, and they'll be, and they'll they'll give them a general reading, right? And um, but also too, what what a lot of which I'm really interested in is is like all of these are like um, like progressions in the main story, which is like the the dance of the dead, and so like they will have end of the cycle ceremonies, like to really like play out that whole mythology so like mm. throughout the whole um cycles um that's what they're like because also too what i was getting into was the sound scrolls and so like this stuff was written on um beads there, there weren't like words and so like each of these like glyphs were um these songs and and these uh, oh. stories that like correspond to them and everybody would know them because they would do them, you know, at the end and the beginning of each cycle. And hmm. so, and so like this becomes like something inter- what I'm interested in. Um, and I think too, um, why I'm doing that with the um, like mandala narrative and imagination station is to really bring this, this stuff out because, you know, um, I, I, I had this dream um, once it was a long time ago. And it, it was like what it started off like a dream where I thought it was reality, you know. I thought it was a regular day. Yeah. And and someone uh, I got a doorbell and like it, the whole time I I thought I was awake, <laughs> like I had no no, <laughs> no realization. And I get a I get a box like a FedEx box. And I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't order anything. That was the first thing that I noticed that was off. I'm like, that's weird. But it's not that weird, right? And so, and yeah. so I'm like, I want I wonder what's in the box. And then, and then I open the box, and it's like this fucking ancient bowl, and it starts to like smoke, and like there's like the whole like field starts to change, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm not awake. Like I hope I'm not awake. <laughs> <laughs> like did, did I just suddenly ingest like peyote? I'm like, oh my god, what did I always go on? <laughs> and then so like every, and then like the smoke starts to like dance, and like it kind of like you know in in dreams you get like this intuitive knowledge where you're like playing this script and like you, you kind of like consciously don't know, but if you like, you could just like go automatic mode <laughs> anyways. Yeah. So I kind of do that. And, and like, uh, consciously, I don't know how to do this ritual, but I just do it. Right. And it's like this, this blessing with a water and the smoke comes out and the sound comes out. And then like this bolt comes up and it's like dancing. And then it shoots out and it goes to the sun and then it writes like this word, like this three like etched word that I notice, and and I'm like, fuck, that's weird. And so when I wake up, I write it down, and I'm like, mm. I can't get it out of my head. And and this is, this I'm like 25, 27. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is a long, this is a long time ago. This is like 10 years ago. 
Uh, and so I Google, and it took me a while to find that. Like, I, I almost gave up. I almost thought, like, I, like I, that's not a meaningful word. But I did find it, and it's it's called a kokin. I, I don't know the right pronunciation, but it, it's three separate words. A, H, X, O, C, then kin, K, I, N. And it's um, the Mayan god of uh, uh, music and poetry. Mm. And and if you dig deeper, which I've had, the the a kokin flirts with the moon, <laughs> and it's like a it's like a, a, a aspect of the sun god. <laughs> and so like that's what happened in my dream. Like the bolt, this little yeah. bolt went, went back into the sun. I'm like, oh my god, that is so fucking funny. Right. But it makes sense. But like at that, if this this takes years for me to decode. <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're like, so you're you're. Is that you? You mentioned, um, I, which I'm totally 100 percent going to do tonight. Uh, before you fall asleep, reciting to yourself, I will oh, yeah, remember yeah. my dreams 23 times. Yeah. Is that like a Discordian thing? Is that a Robert Anton Wilson thing, or is okay? I once read. Um, you know, like the science behind mantras, and I, I think the actual technical thing is twenty or twenty-one. And then I'm um, I'm a big Robert Anton Wilson fan, so my own little cosmic giggle is to make it twenty-three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you, so you caught on to that. You're, you're you're doing this little like mantra practice before bed, and then you're like having these wild psychedelic dreams. Yeah, and then yeah. you're um, decoding them over the course of years sometimes. And from mm-hmm. that, it sounds like you're able to extrapolate or interpolate or some kind of polite uh, <laughs> the uh, the like overall cultural forces from the collective unconsciousness that we all share. Uh, that's mm-hmm. like it sounds like your your impression of it is that it's bifurcating into uh, separate consensus reality narratives that are like divided from each other and unattached to each other. Am I like, am I, am I, am I getting that right? Yeah. My, my, my current uh, interpretation of like what's happening is, is something like that. Yeah. I get like, um, you know, every now and then I muse on, on everything and you can't help, but like um, even in your, your dreams, like one time I had this like really, uh, funny dream and it also corresponds to paper bums uh where in the dream it's like post-apocalyptic right <laughs> and like everybody like uh everything's collapsed everybody's running around in the streets like dazed and confused okay. yeah yeah and That's and i'm pushing I'm, I'm i'm pushing a cart full of books <laughs> paper nice books. And I'm like, I'm like trying to move them and like not lose them. And I'm like moving away from it, like all the, the chaos. Right. And then somebody goes like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I got to save all these books. And he's like, why? Like everything's going to shit. Everything's falling. He's like, you don't understand when you read a book, it fucking it does something to your mind. And I got to like preserve it. <laughs> yes. and, then, and then so like, you know, I have these like dreams like that. And I, I I do like the paper bums and like it, it's it's something um what do you call it? William S. Burroughs says like if you cut up um the present, the future leaks out. 